Hi there again, this is Hans from Siegecraft Electronics. Today we're going to step you through on some of the stuff I get the most questions about on these early Williams pinball machines. What we'll do today is we're going to go through how to get into and how to use the built-in diagnostic sequence on a System 6 machine, uh, like a firepower right here. Pretty powerful set of diagnostics for how to operate the machine. It does not cover any of the boot-up sequence like an early Valley, but it gives you quite a lot of play field information, a lot of status of the board and how it's running as long as it's booting up. So what we'll go through here is uh, show you how to get into that, how to use it. To do that we do need to prep the machine a little bit, so we're going to go through, we're going to pull off the play field glass, pull off the back glass, uh, unlock the coin door, and then we'll, we'll get into how to test this machine up. As we go through this here, uh, there's a few switches inside your coin door that I'm going to be referring to pretty constantly. These are your main diagnostic switches in a System 6 machine. You have your high score reset, your auto up manual down switch, uh, your advanced button. These are all going to be present on a System 4 machine as well. Uh, system 3's will be a little different. We'll cover that in a future episode if I uh, get access to a System 3 machine. Uh, lastly, you also have your memory protect switch on the coin door. This is not present if you have a System 4 era machine uh, hardware setup, but it is present on System 6 and uh, and everything afterwards. Only a minor difference there, so we'll cover both the System 4 and System 6 in this uh, all-in-one uh, one sequence here. Uh, first test we're going to cover, I'm actually going to keep the back glass on here just because it tends to uh, really flood out my camera and you won't be able to see anything if I took the back glass off. It really doesn't matter either way. What we're going to do first is the display test. So on your uh, diagnostic switches, we'll leave the switch in the manual down position, press advance. Uh, gives you a blank screen there for a moment, press advance again, goes into your uh, display test sequence. At the moment here it's all just stuck on zeros. Um, move the switch up to the auto up and it'll start sequencing through all the digits on all the displays. May not seem that useful but this will let you see any patterns if there's any problems. For instance if you see a missing digit in the player 2 and 4 or the player 1 and 3 Things like that, what you're looking for is any kind of, uh, any kind of pattern in the, in the display or just anything that's wrong other than all the numbers matching. If you leave it in the manual down, uh, press your advance button, it'll stop on a single digit. As you keep hitting advance there, it will just cycle through them each time you press it. Uh, then we can go leave that back in the auto up again. Uh, hit the advance button, we'll move into the uh, play field lamp test, which this does is... Uh, it blinks all the playfield lamps in sequence. Uh, not that useful for handling diagnostic work if you have a, a lamp column or a lamp row issue, but it lets you really easily spot any bulbs that are burnt out, such as I didn't realize my, uh, my one can play here is, uh, is burnt out at the moment, so I'll have to fix that. Uh, well, and it'll also be uh, blinking all the, the, uh, the bulbs on your, on your playfield as well. Pretty much anything that's CPU controlled uh, as opposed to the GI lights, which are always going to be turned on, but all the CPU controlled lights should be blinking right now in the same sequence. A lot more powerful in the System 11, but for the System 3 to 7, this is, uh, this is really all you got for the lamp display test. And this is just, uh, just showing here again the, the lamp display, but showing the actual play field as opposed to the, uh, the back glass. Again, not doing much, just blinking all the, all the lamps in sequence, but it does make it easy to spot burnt out bulbs. I did not notice before that uh, I've actually got a burnt out bulb here in the power insert. And the number one in my, uh, in my bonus, uh, bonus tree there is also burnt out. I'll take care of those uh, a little while later, but it, it helps to show you the, uh, the fault there on these. Solenoid uh, test sequence, which I'm going to wait just a minute to, to put that on just because it is so loud and you won't be able to hear anything. What this does is, you'll see on your display here, it'll go to zero, 02, which shows the solenoid display, and then you'll see number cycling here from 1 to, uh, to 24. And when any number is on, it'll fire that particular solenoid once. Uh, because this is a System 6 machine, the solenoid circuit uh, is used for sounds as well. So on a System 4 and a System 6, as you get partway through that, you're going you're gonna to hear some of the sounds also getting played. Uh, what you basically do is you... Keep this in the auto up position for your diagnostic switch. Hit the advance button, it'll start cycling through it. Let's start that here. And as you can hear, when it gets to the spot where this is solenoid, it fires that off for you just once. 
And there, there are your sounds from uh, numbers 9 to 16. Now, if you put it back into the manual position and hit the, uh, the advanced button, you see it stays on a single solenoid. That lets you keep pulsing and testing a single solenoid. Every time you hit advance, it goes to another one. And there is no solenoid 2 in this machine, so we'll leave it there for a moment. Uh, what this lets you do is see if any solenoids are not functioning. Uh, pretty, a pretty useful test, actually, in this one, because it lets you isolate a single solenoid to it to let you see how it's doing. Also, while the solenoid test is activated, your special solenoids, which are not computer controlled, they're just mechanically, sw well, electrically switched inside, they're also active, so you can test your slingshots, your pop bumpers, and also your, um, your flippers are activated. Now, when you're testing your pop bumpers and your slingshots, while I'm using my finger here, it shows them working may not correctly be adjusted, so you want to actually use a ball to test them and make sure it fires with, properly with the ball. Particularly the pop bumpers, because they're very, they can be pretty tricky to adjust, so whenever you're testing out something where you want to see if it's working, if you can use a ball, use a ball. Next we're going to move on to the, uh, the switch test here. Back into the auto up, start cycling the solenoid again, hit advance, and we are uh, into your switch test sequence. Now, system four and system six is, again, a little different than system seven. This is always going to show you the last switch that was tested. So just because it still shows number 46 here does not mean that particular switch is stuck. It just means that's the last one that was tested. If I hit one of the stand-ups here, you see it goes to number 39, stays on 39. So that means your 46 wasn't stuck. Anytime you hit a switch, it'll just uh, show you that switch number on the display there. Now again, highly recommend that you use a ball just because just because I can press a switch here with my finger that activates doesn't mean a ball is going to do it. Uh, particularly important with rollovers like up here in the, uh, the, fire, the fire lanes. You want to actually use a ball, make sure the ball will, will activate the switch. Uh, also, because of the way the special solenoids work, it does keep your special solenoids active. So again, you want to use a ball. It shows you the, uh, your pop bumpers are scoring because it is a separate switch for scoring as opposed to activating it. Same with your sleep shots. And um, particularly, this is a very important test to know on multi-ball games because a game will not start unless it detects all three balls in the shooter shooter lane or the ball trough, but it never gives you an indication that's what's wrong. You'll just press the button and nothing will happen. So this will let you go in and test that all three of your uh, all three of your ball trough switches are working. A little bit tricky to get at those, so if you're if you're having trouble, don't feel afraid to pull your uh, your apron off if you really need to get access. Um, I always find that the actual shooter lanes can be pretty tough to adjust uh, more than anything else, as as well as the uh, the pop bumpers here. Do a quick roll over here. Just a, really not much to it on the switch test. And then the last thing we're going to move into is the audit setting, which is probably one of the most confusing ones there is. Zero 04, which is your audits. Uh, we'll pause here for a second. I just want to back up and show the whole back list to, uh, to give a little better explanation of this here. All right, so this, this right here is the infamous audit mode. Uh, tends to get a bit of a bad reputation because if a machine gets powered up and does not boot into a track mode properly, a lot of times it will boot into audit mode. Um, which is actually a good thing to see because it means your machine software is running, it's just that you're not maintaining your settings. So if you see this coming up a lot when you power on your machine, more often than not it means that it's uh, time for new batteries on your, on your CPU board. What you have here, 04 means your audit mode. 00 is the audit number. Um, up here, the 1497-2. That tells you what game it is, what software revision it is. Um, number 1 means you have a green set of flipper ROMs. Um, they had a 0 there. I believe that's the yellow flipper ROMs, which is more System 4. Uh, 497 is the game number that William assigned to Firepower. 
and the 2 means it's the second revision of the Firepower software. So this actually does mean something if you know how to read it. Now if we uh, keep it in the auto-op or manual down, it doesn't matter. Press your advanced button. Start cycling through, as you can see, different numbers here. Uh, the first dozen or so are record keeping. Tells you how many games were played, extra balls. All that should be spelled out in the manual for the game itself. Um, we get about to number 12 here. This is the current high score. There is the, uh, I believe on Firepower number 13 is the, uh, the score you need for uh, an extra game. And there's uh, additional stuff there. And then number 20 here. I'm sorry. Forget which one it is on this. They change it around from game to game. Uh, the important part here is remember how to get into free play. Some games it's number 30, some games it's number 18. What it is is, um, in the book it says maximum number of credits, meaning that you can have up to 20 credits put into the game. Uh, this is adjustable right here. If you, hit your, um, if you hit your credit button or the start button, you see it starts going up or down depending on what position your auto up manual down switch is. You want to put your game into free play? Set that to zero. You're now in free play. Uh, so what that does, it ignores the credit switches. So even if you put coins in, this will never uh, the number of credits will never go up. If you play a game, the number of credits never goes down. You also never hear the uh, the credit knocker. But that's how you put it under free play. Uh, it does vary from game to game. So make sure to check your manual. This is, as I said, it's listed as the uh, maximum number of credits uh, on it. And next we're going to pull the back glass off. There's a couple more things to show you here on the inside. Uh, to get it out of audit mode on a System 6 and earlier machine, the only way to do it is to turn your machine on and off. So uh, I'm going to pull the back glass off, power cycle the machine, we'll show you some stuff on the inside of the machine. Now this is inside here, the, uh, the back box of my Firepower machine. A couple notes here. I do have a little bit of difference from a factory machine. I have swapped in an aftermarket power supply. Uh, and also one of my ROM adapters uh, because of the impossible to find original ROM chips for a firepower. I've also upgraded to a, a batteryless option with an NV RAM from uh, Pinforge, who I highly recommend. I also resell their products as well. Uh, right now I'm sold out of the, the ROM adapters just because I need to, uh, need to upgrade it a little bit for a couple of quirks that I noticed. So when they do become available again, they'll be a little bit updated from what I have here. What you have on this board, though, to be concerned with is a pair of diagnostic buttons here, uh, a pair of uh, dip switch banks. Most of the dip switches and the upper diagnostic button are not used in a System 4 or System 6 game. They're unique to System 3 only, which we'll cover at a later date. Your lower diagnostic button here, though, will give you a quick check of your CPU board. Press that, and you should see two blanks, and then it'll go into uh, basically nothing. Uh, what that is, is a quick RAM and ROM check of your machine. Uh, what you want is those two blinks and the lights to shut off. If anything, any lights stay on, you have a problem. Like I'll close my coin door here and show you. Power cycle it first. Uh, the memory protect circuit will, uh, if you have your coin door closed, will give you an automatic failure. The lights lock on there just because it, uh, when you have your coin door closed, it, it protects your, your settings in your, in your RAM here. So because it's protecting the settings, it can't, uh, can't get a proper test. You want to make sure to do this with your coin door open. We'll cycle the power again, hit the button. Two blanks, which means your, uh, your CPU board is running properly. Uh, there are a couple other commands you can do with the dip switches. I very rarely, if ever, use them. They are covered in your manual. Basically, it's for uh, clearing memory, clearing audits, and also what they call an auto cycle, which is um, a diagnostic mode where it cycles through the various modes. Uh, it is nice to know the, uh, the clear mode if you do run a, uh, an NVRAM option because you can't just pull the batteries to clear the, the memory because as you see there's no, there's no batteries, it'll constantly store that. To do that you'll take your second dip switch down on the top bank and then press the uh, press your lower button. You'll hear, see the two LEDs bl blink and it should clear out everything in the, in the game. I don't want to lose my high score, so I'm not going to do that today. Uh, the other one to be of note is your, uh, on your soundboard here, there's a small button up on top and a pair of dip switches. 
You'll almost never touch the dip switches. Those are uh, a couple of oddball settings. Like if I want to turn the speech feature off or if I want to put into a, a pretty much useless sound mode where it sounds like uh, a really bad set of chimes. So for the most part, you just make sure those are, those are set where you need it to and you never touch them again. But there is a push button here where uh, if you push that button, it'll put the soundboard into its own diagnostic test where it'll, it'll just start cycling through various sound and speeches. Uh, the only way to stop that will be to turn the soundboard on, uh, power off and on again, just because it, it gets in, into a permanent loop. But we'll press that button here to show it to you. It doesn't go through all the sounds, but it does test most of the, the soundboard. Uh, a very useful little test if you want to diagnose if the problems on a soundboard or a solenoid or, or a cable button. But uh, that pretty much covers all the diagnostics in this machine. Uh, a lot of useful stuff if you get used to it. It um, can be a little tricky getting used to the, the various settings on the, on the switches in your coin door with that auto up and manual down button. But uh, this will let you test quite a lot of the machine. Like I said, it's really um, really helpful to know this if you've got a multi-ball machine just because the machine will appear to be completely non-functional um, which point you want to get into the switch test mode test your, uh, your, your uh, trough switches with the, the leaf switches in there but it'll also let you go through quite a lot of stuff and hopefully help you uh, figure out what's right and what's wrong with your machine and great to know if you're evaluating one that you haven't, uh, haven't purchased yet and in the future, I'll be going through this again on a System 7 machine because there are a few other little, uh, little differences in it due to the more powerful hardware in there. Mostly the same, but uh, enough different that we'll cover that in a separate, uh, separate video. In the meantime, I'm Hans from Siegecraft Electronics, and uh, you can visit the website at www.siegecraft.us or uh, on YouTube at uh, Siegecraft PV would be the username there. I've uh, got a couple videos on there, a few more on the way, and uh, thanks for watching.